Brent, what is up? Hey, welcome to the Fix This Bill That Sunday Night Live show. I'm Brad. And I'm Susan. And the Titans are awesome. Yay! Woo! Titans, big win. Big, big win this week. And yes. uh, it was awesome. We were watching most of the day. Well, yeah, I was watching yeah. it with the boys and uh, they kicked some serious booty. So um, it was like, man, it was like 46 to 14 or something crazy. Wow. Like yeah. Yeah, I wasn't home for that, but yeah. you guys enjoyed it. Uh, Wolf's Den, we are up on YouTube now. We were just a little late, yeah. but uh, we're getting everything around there. We are here. So we're going to welcome everybody uh, over here on the, on the uh, I, not IG, IGs. We already welcome these folks. But on the YouTube, what is up? We got Katie, Rory, Travis. What's up, guys? Mike Cardinal, yeah. Lipinski. People are getting here early in the and house. Chatting. Razor, Brian, Keith, Dennis, Michael Lusk, and JD. What's up, guys? What's up? Uh, yeah, we we uh, have, excuse me, we've been having a, a uh, slow week this week. Our kids were off school, so mm -hmm. that was that was nice. It was um, nice, yeah. We just got a, had a lot of family time, so I hope you guys all had a safe and enjoyable Thanksgiving since the last time we talked. Cool. And uh, this week we launched a new video. So we launched the small bathroom makeover slash renovation. That is live, went live this morning, and uh, I am glad to be done with it because yeah. uh we did not have a toilet in our downstairs we for we have a toilet again for like a month now we just need an oven that's operational and we will be in business and then the oven broke and then the oven broke what well, can you do well. what can you do uh but you know it's whatever it, it's it's all good it's all good we're uh we're making our way through the world today yeah, we are. <laughs> takes everything you got <laughs> but yeah do you know yeah. the next line no i don't Something sure about can't help sure a lot. would take takes a lot. Or... Sure would help a lot. Yeah. Now really was thinking. Would help a lot. I'll let you sing. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes, Sometimes you go where everybody knows your name. All right, enough boom, cheers. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, speaking of cheers, we'll be cheersing anyway. later with a new beer. But before we, we do be. that, uh, we want to. I got to figure out how to do this correctly. But we want to go over and thank some new yeah. members of the uh, of the Builders right. Club. So, and our transitions are on point again. Uh, by the way, if you're on Instagram, please come join us over on YouTube. We are at Fix This Build That Live. That is the second channel, and uh, there's a cool. Uh, what graphic. do you call it? Graphic. Thank you. Banner, we have a cool banner. We have all kinds of stuff going People's on there that names you have are no idea. Right now. So we did want to thank some new members to uh, the Builders Club this week. We yeah. had Brian Mundy, Edward Dempsey, Sean Perrin, and I'm, I'm going with Ricardo. Ricardo Lamont, Ooh. or it could be Richard Lamont, but I'm going with Ricardo Lamont. And uh, thank you guys if so you were much. If you from Ohio, it'd be we, Richard we, Lamont. 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 <laughs> we got a Lima. And yes. it's supposed to be like Lima, but it's yeah. Lima, Ohio. So, uh, <laughs> but I, I think you're right. You. I think it's Ricardo Lamont. Yes. Like that's big. Fancy. Thank you to those those folks. Uh, if you want to know what the Builders Club is all about, it's basically the inner circle of Fix This Build That audience, uh, where we hang out. They get early access to videos. They get updates throughout the week, as well mm -hmm. as credits in the videos and free plans and some other cool stuff. So, if you want to check that out. You can head to the link down there, fixthisbuildat.com forward slash builders club. That's right. Thank you again to all those folks. We go back to the thank main you. Look how seamless that was. I just, it's, it's, it's starting to, it's really starting it's to come together here. It's just ridiculous, folks. Okay. Uh, ba -ba, da -da. Who else we got here? This is your singing interlude That here. is. Da -da 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 -da. Lots of songs tonight. Yeah. Badger Woodcraft, what is up? Uh, from Seattle, Washington. How's it going, man? Uh, October Media, we are up. We are up live on, on YouTube now. Come over and join if you haven't already. And uh, whoops, we have, uh, who is that? Uh, Grumpy Woodchucker. What's up, uh, Dave? What's up? <laughs> Bama India fan in the house. All right. Uh, and, and, and who? somebody said, uh, he said, oh, Grumpy said, hi, Brad, and friend. And friend. Also known as wife. Also known as the wife. Yes. So, better half, if you will. At least better three quarters. <laughs> I, I'll give you, I don't know, like, you know, instead another of half, I'll give you another, you, you realize that three half? quarters is I'm, better than oh, half, true. right? Yeah. I'll take it. So, and then my hair looks crazy she's, today. She's, you got something going on over there. I've got things happening. I don't know. Anyway, that's what's been going on uh, this week. And then this coming week, we are going back mm -hmm. to the Midersaw station. So we talked about that last, last uh, uh, live stream, but uh, it starts tomorrow, getting it on the Miter station. So we're pumped about that. And uh, I'm going to be putting the miter saw in there, getting some of uh, the fence and all that good stuff. And uh, quite honestly, I have not even started uh, designing the dust collection. No. I, I've been thinking about it in my head, but not that much. <laughs> so 
Sometimes what you think about it? In my arm. In I don't know. Arm. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, no, it's been, it was an interesting week for us. You it know? was. Like, it was. I don't know. A little bit. Uh, we were, we were doing slow. things. Yeah. A little bit slow. I mean, you know, it's vacation kind of. Sort yeah. of. For the kids at least. I don't know. Yeah. I got no idea. We adopted their schedule. We have. You did right. work too, but yeah. We did. Okay. We did. All yeah. right, cool. Okay, so yeah, everybody's like, where are they? Yeah, uh, we were a couple minutes late. We're a couple minutes Dennis late. says that he ate lunch at the Cheers bar in Boston a few years ago. Oh, nice. That would be cool. I, that was cool. like That's one of my cool. childhood memories was Cheers being on TV. Cheers. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Sam and Sam Diane. Warren and Sam and Diane. Yeah. Yep. And Nor- Norm was Norm. there. Norm. Yeah. And Cliff. Woody. Cliff Clavin. Cliff Clavin. I yeah. About Woody, that. Was, uh, Woody was. Uh, uh, Woody was. Woody Harrelson. Harrelson. He was young. Oh, he was super young. Yeah. He was like the barman. Oh, so yeah. speaking of bars and beers, the beer of the week is, uh, I'm I, I'm gonna be per- perfectly perfectly. I just read this perfectly. Pepe, perfectly. I'm gonna be perfectly honest. I'm a bit scared of this they one. They won us over with the dog. It though. is Pepe. Take a look. Cinnamon stout. At the dog. And it is cinnamon milk stout. So cute. I don't like it, having the words milk in my beer and cinnamon kind of kind of freaks me out a little bit. But uh, little, anyway, well, it's you know, we like listen, let me read the thing. Chili, though. It's an yeah, ale. Bur- I said milk. I didn't say anything about the cinnamon. I said about the cinnamon. Milk. Go ahead. Read, read listen the, to what I'm saying. Read the description, please, Pepe. <laughs> <laughs> Yazoo uh, Pepe is an ale brewed really with healthy dose of oats, lactose, and cinnamon. Conjures up oh. memories of times with loved ones sitting by the fire. You're not alone. Drinking milk? So I'm, I'm hoping it's going to be like the Christmas ale. I mean... If it's the Christmas ale, I'm good. I'll like, be is honest. that just their fancy way? I brought water I know. just in I, case. I might have to run in and grab a, uh, a different yeah. one. I but. mean, it seems very interesting. And I'm even going to... Ooh, it ooh, looks like beer. It smells nice. Looks like beer. I was expecting it to be like Cheers. milky, but no. Oh, that's stout. Whoa. I don't taste the cinnamon. I. It's it's, it's more. Stout. Yeah. Ooh, it tastes like coffee. It does. It's a stout. It's like a Guinnessy. It beer, is. Which it I is. do like Guinness. So yeah, for a long Yazoo time. Brewery, check it out. If you like a stout. Yeah. I don't really taste the cinnamon as much. I don't taste the milk. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's just a stout. I guess if you think about Guinness I don't drink as stout being beer like a, lot, a so. thicker, milkyish beer, people are probably going to be correcting us online about yeah. what this means. Whatever. It is very know. similar to that. It's good. It's got a lot of flavor. It's all right. This would be great. I'm digging it. So thank you. Like, uh, big yeah. thanks to uh, to Lipman Brothers I, for providing the beer. Yes, thank and you. go check it out. If you're interested in a cute yes. dog on a can and like stout beer, Super. this one's for you. Yeah, I really could imagine sitting by a fire sipping on this. I could, with a dog in my it's lap. It's very festive. We don't have a dog. Yes, we don't have a dog. <laughs> uh, but that would be fun. All right, let's see what we have in, uh, going on. Are we on Spotify? No, we are, we are not. Um, we are not. We can only do so much, folks. Yeah. yeah. Is, uh, <laughs> oh. Barrio says, you're Hang full on. three. What? Um, Mike says we need to pour it in a glass so they can see it. Oh, I'm gonna go. Well, yeah, go, yeah. I, I, that that probably back. makes more sense with a stout. Yep. Uh, man, Mike, dude, she's she's jumping to it. <laughs> Good golly, uh, Jimmy Dietz from Boston. What's up? Uh, was down at Cracker Barrel on Jay Percy. Oh, Jay Percy, pretty awesome, man. Hope you had a good one. Milky is grumpy. Uh, Jenny Bean, what's up? Oh, my cousin. Hello. My cousin. My uncle. My cousin. The father of my cousins. <laughs> All, All right. right. Let's see here. This will probably look way out. This will probably look way cooler. Uh, I just said, ooh, yeah, that is, oh, that wow. is it's like, stoutish. It looks like a Coca-Cola or something. It does. It's not. That is. Oh. I wish the glasses were chilled. Yeah, this is, yeah, that's not my traditional. Oh, wow. I mean, that is like, that is dark. That is dark. All right, let me see how I can do. A stout. I feel that was a pretty good pour. That what was a good think? pour. Yeah. I feel like I need to have more. It's like drinking coffee going on here you don't like coffee i hate coffee <laughs> <laughs> but mine's not as fancy as yours Did you yeah, just pour it in well you know you get to pour it the right way you have to pour it the right way i can't help it Jeez. uh Harsh. what a recommend for a bandsaw sean khan um yeah i've got the the jet 14 inch steel bandsaw and uh they're on sale right now for 15 percent off on black friday through i think the tomorrow through the 30th so if you are interested in one uh i did if you're on my email list, you've got that email. I think I have a link to it also in my tools list. But uh, if you go to Woodcraft, they are 15% off at Woodcraft. So go check that out uh, because they are, they are it's, a, it's a great bandsaw and 15% off. I mean, I, yeah. I think they're about, 
a thousand bucks, and so you know you're talking that's some a, serious cheese, hundred fifty yeah, bucks that's off. Not, that's a is uh, is quite nice. Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, Lipinski, <laughs> senior in high school, yeah, created sorry. own furniture business two years ago, looking to continue uh, to go to school for carpentry or business. Lipinski, dude, congrats. First awesome. of all, uh, love that uh, love that you are a senior in high school and, and... and going after it. Um, I think that. By the way, we'll remind us to tell you about our sons. They're hot on the YouTube trail. They are. Uh, it is really funny. So uh, Literally, they're, they're, like... they're going after their business. Hold on, hold on. Oh, sorry. Later. We're not going to go on tangents today. Oh, God. As many. That's going to be hard. So uh, okay. I, would, I would recommend, um, <laughs> you know, there's, there's a lot of great business books and resources out there. Uh, but for, for business specifically, like if you want to just get grounded in business, which I would highly recommend, mm -hmm. um, I, I don't have any, I, I'm thinking like, Ugh, because I learned mine in, in college, I have a master's in business and I took some classes in some accounting classes and stuff like that in undergrad. Uh, I would recommend like trying to find just like some basics to basics to um, uh, business management or accounting, because the things that you want to, things you want to learn about are like uh, learn in accounting, you'll learn about an operating statement and cash flow and balance sheets and all that good stuff. And those are things that you really need to understand if you're going to go into business and own a business by yourself, uh, own your own business, is to really do that. Uh, one, one book I actually would recommend is Profit First, and that is by, I believe, Michael Markowitz. And that book is great. It, uh, it walks through a lot of that, and it talks about paying yourself first, paying yourself the profit first, mm -hmm. instead of traditionally what, what a lot of companies will do is they'll take all the money and then it just gets spent, and then like whatever's mm -hmm. left over is what they take. His methodology is when you get the money, you pay yourself the profit and then you pay everything else out of what's oh. left. So it's kind of flips it on its head. Uh, it'd be a very good read for you just getting started in business. And then I would just look at some different courses. Uh, I don't know any great online resources, but I would look at some, you know, intro to accounting, business management, mm -hmm. uh, stuff like that, where you can really start to understand no. the financials behind a business and just a cursory. You don't have to go super deep. So are you suggesting that over, because he talked about going to um carpentry or business school are you saying like read the books oh i do both okay those are two very different things right like right so carpentry i, I don't have any suggestions for you I, I never went to any trade schools so i would check out whatever trade schools are around yeah. you um but yeah i would fully suggest you know grow your just like you want to grow your woodworking skills mm -hmm. you also need to grow your business skills and even if you just have just enough to know that when you hire a bookkeeper at some point in time that you know enough to know that they're doing things right. Right. And that they're not, you know, fleecing you and, and taking your money. Right. Um, what about Dave Ramsey Entree Leadership? That whole, is that more like managing a team? Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. I'm, I'm too far away from that. I, I mean, don't I just remember. knowing that you're a senior in high school, I would encourage you to look into some of the Dave Ramsey stuff. There's, um, I know there's a whole program for teens about like, yeah. understanding money oh, yeah. and like how to manage your own money and how to try to be debt free because that's another thing like going to college it's a lot of debt and then or carpentry school i would imagine although that seems like a good well you can like the trades are, are a great money. thing to go into yeah right um but just to kind of have a good grounding like that's one of the things that we're really trying to focus on with our kids is to teach them um to understand that you know we don't we try to stay away from debt and you know like it just just to kind of get a good what am i trying to say a good basis a good basis for understanding how money works really yeah. and maybe you're check already there maybe you've already done that because i know a lot of high schools teach that program but um if you haven't i would check it out yeah corey robinson says uh let Derrick Henry know that uh, he appreciates him on his fantasy team. Oh, we'll, wow. We'll let Derrick know. A good, that's a good player yeah. to have, I would imagine. He's uh, amazing. Uh, Nate, Nate Catron is, is driving you... back to Nashville from South Florida. Oh, good luck. Cool. Stay safe. Hopefully you're not watching. You're just listening. I have a Derrick Henry question for you. Grumpy Woodchucker, we have not found any, any land yet. No. Uh, and Widener Woodworking, I get my uh, Baltic Birch from uh, Nashville Plywood. Yes. You are really focused tonight. I'm trying, man. I know. I have a question for you. Yes, let's hear it. Now that Derrick Henry is playing for the Titans. Oh, I, yeah, I could care less Alabama, if he's about Alabama. But I'm saying, like, no, are you are you happy that you get to, like, root for him? He's, like, the best player in the NFL, the I'm best running saying, back in the NFL. Of course when I am. he was playing for Alabama. I could care less where these guys went to college as long as they go to the right NFL team. <laughs> okay. Yeah. He's amazing. So being a Tennessee yeah. fan, you know, Dave, uh, Bama India fan, 
uh, he's, uh, you know, he, he would have loved him back in, in uh, for four years. I, I, I think he went all four years. Uh, but guess what? We're going to have him for more than four years. That's so right. we'll get to enjoy. Hopefully, hopefully he doesn't I get mean, traded. But he's, he's franchised. Like, there's no way. We, we're not letting him go. He's like, I, when I was, uh, I like in, when I was in college, when I was in college uh, is when we had Eddie George. And, oh. man, he was Eddie George, Steve McNair. Was that um, when the whole miracle? Music City Miracle. Frank yeah. Wycheck. Uh, Who's the I'm guy? thinking number 85. Um, the, his kid are Derek Mason. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and uh, you're thinking of... Um, I'm thinking of the guy, Dyson. Yeah, Kevin yeah, Dyson. Kevin Dyson. That, though, that was a great team back then, but right now, it's, they're even better. They're even better. Dare I say. Wow, that's pretty bold. I know, it is bold. Yes. All right. The Personal MBA by Josh Kaufman. Awesome. Oh, part of handyman. Of, Thank I'm you. I'm glad that we're getting book the recommendations MBA. on here, too. That's good. All right. Uh, that's awesome. That's great. Uh, also, we I would say... Um, Look at audiobooks if you haven't already. It's a great way to kind of take yeah, all those information are, are great. while you're doing stuff. <laughs> Katie said, alive without, with no tangents. Say it ain't so. I know. I, no, I don't, don't think it'll happen, that. Katie. Uh, Mike Cardinal, thank you. I'm glad you like the color uh, that we went with in the bathroom. It it's is, pretty. Uh, it's called uh, w- w- Windsor, not Windsor, Wyndham, Wyndham Gray. No, it's called um, Gentleman's Gray. No. Yes. No. Oh, that one, Wyndham Gray. Wyndham Gray. Wickham. Wickham, Wickham Gray. Thank you, Wickham. We knew that was slightly wrong. Yeah, something Wickham didn't Gray. Right. Wickham like Gray. It makes me think of um, Mr. Darcy. Wick, Wickham, <laughs> like a, Wickham Gray. Shirley, Shirley Wickham Shirley. Gray. And then our, our which is not cabinet gray. is... It's more of like a bluish. Gentleman's Gray, which is also not gray. It's, it's blue. for sure blue. Yeah. But it's called Gentleman's Gray. It's funny, gray. but they look really pretty together. It's a, They're like and the wall is a nice soft color, but... Yeah, it looks good together. We like it. It does. Uh, yeah. Let's see here. Uh, Rob, thank you so much. I'm glad uh, I'm glad you're enjoying the YouTube videos, my man. Uh, didn't catch where you said I got my Baltic birch. Widener, uh, I get it locally here from Nashville Plywood is where I get it. Big John Hose, what's up, my man? Was it hard on the family getting started before you were able to quit and go full time? Yes. Yes, it was. What was it? What was the question? Uh, was it hard on the family when I was in the transition between... Quitting and uh, not. Yeah. It was, but uh, I think the, I, I mean, I don't want to go into that, honestly. Um, okay. <laughs> we, if you go to episode Let 10, us know how you feel. if you go to episode 10 on the Made for Profit podcast, you can hear all about that because I, I kind of tell the whole yep. story. But um, we need that programmed in. We need, like, well, that's on, yeah, but like when yeah. people ask questions, Bloop. answers. Because um, we've answered them before. Right. But, but it, it was very hard because. It was hard you know, on you more than it was hard on the family. It was hard on me, but we made a, a conscious decision as a family, right? So right. Susan and I kind of like came together. I mean, the kids were, were still that, super maybe. young. Yeah. Um, but even then, I, I kind of said, hey, like, you know, dad's not going to be around as much because dad's going right. to be working his butt off. So I would get home at about 6, uh, stay with the kids. I mean, they were going to bed early then, so right. they're going to bed at like seven thirty. That was what I was going to say. The saving grace for us is that our kids were younger. They were still younger, so they didn't need as much attention. I think it would be harder if we were doing it now. For so sure. I'd be with the kids from like six to seven thirty. They'd go to bed. I'd hang out with Susan until about nine, and they'd go work in the shop from nine to midnight or one a.m. Yeah. And that's what I did basically every single day of and the week. And then I would try to take them like on the weekend. On the weekends, I, I would put like, in more time. My way of helping was like keeping the kids entertained yeah. essentially and trying to handle all that stuff and you did it well you up. i did thank you <laughs> <laughs> so did you obviously you did uh, no, so yeah. yeah but it was it was, it was, it was very tough but sure. we knew we knew there was an end in sight yeah and that's what got us through it and um, right you know it and worked. that was that was good it worked Jill, out really what's well up? we got kevin in the house uh oh, fpu there so we go I, I, the fpu that's fantastic uh, uh nail benders giving some good advice My, as a finished carpenter good business tip don't give everyone who asks a free hat Yes. <laughs> Did, yeah. Don't give it away. I mean, uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, the, the no tangent. No, no, yeah. Just uh, you can send a pack of Michigan beers, Jill. We will we will highlight those uh, <laughs> for sure. Naughty Naughty oh, Woodcraft. Yeah, what sure. is up? Jack Clamp in the house. What's up? Morgan Jim Miter. Chris, what is up, my man? Been a minute since we've seen you on here, boy. Who is this? Uh, Chris from uh, the Great White North. Oh, Z's woodworking. Is there a best approach to naturally unwarp a warped board? Wow, that sounds like a big question. Uh, no, <laughs> I mean there is a simple answer. There is no. like I don't. There is a way, um, and I can't. 
think about it at the moment, but you can go look it up. If you look up, there is a way that you can unwarp boards, maybe, and this is, your mileage may vary, but like if a board has cupped, it depends upon the grain direction, like how the grain yeah, is and all that stuff. Factors, right? So if it's just a gentle cup, if you're like on a twist, you're, you're, this will not work. But if it's cupped, uh, you can apply water to the other side. And then like, I, I forget which way it is, but anyway, there's a way, there is a way to like do it. And, and you can get a little bit of, <laughs> a little bit of work out of that. But in general, you got to mill it out, right? So uh, if it, because what's going to happen is if you do that and then, if you put the water on it and, and get it to kind of re-moisturize and whatever, whenever you take it back to that lower humidity area, uh, it depends upon why it cupped. And if it cupped because of an imbalance of moisture or because it was just natural stresses. So that's gonna be the big thing. Uh, but by and large, you're gonna have to mill it out and there's not a natural a natural way to uncup, uh, unwarp a warped board. It seems like a question that research would be needed. Right. You know, like, it's, it it's not even on... research. It's just like, like you have no idea. It's luck of the draw. Like, because like boards, you, you could do one like to one a thing. Lot of variables. You could do it to one board and it might work and you could do it to the other one and it might oh. not and vice hmm. versa. So that's a pain. Good luck is yes, buy, buy them, sure. buy them straight and dry in the first place. Uh, yeah. So the, oh, the Kevin has man. a question. Oh yeah. yeah. Evidently the, the bears were not great today. The We've bears. Seen a lot of that. The bears. Um, did you completely replace your income before you flipped the switch and went full time as a content creator? This is Kevin. Kevin. All right. Kevin. Um, he's taking a sip of beer to prepare himself for the answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go. Let, let, let's go. Let's this let's go. Uh, let's go full business questions. You guys yeah. are obviously on a tear. I mean, if you have on the business, business questions, questions, throw them out there. At us. Uh, Jeremy, what's up, my man? Jared, go home. Jeremy, come on over to YouTube, my bro. Uh, yeah. Way better. Water's warm. The beers are the beers and the beers are thick. dark. <laughs> dark. That was the word I was I can put like you put a, a candy cane in there and like <laughs> and just stick cane. straight up. I know it's Gross. like it's, it's cinnamon peppermint milk stout. It, it, whatever. It cinnamon is milk a stout. nice sipping beer. This is not one that I. It doesn't taste like, like cinnamon or milk to me. I feel like this Thankfully, is the kind of beer I thought that you I was, could do a boiler maker in there. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I was very scared of that because of the taste, but it's like yeah, it's really it, good. It tastes like a just like a stout, like yeah. a good stout. Yes, I like um, it. I'm a fan. What was the question? Business question. <laughs> um, tangents are back, people. Did you completely replace ah, your replace income before income. you went full time? As a yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, quick answer: No, I did not. Long answer: um, I was in corporate America for 17 years, and during those years, I got my MBA. I got some Six Sigma certifications, including my black belt and master black belt. So I had a lot of training, and my undergraduate was in mechanical engineering. Uh, so by the time, you know, 17 years in and I was going through managerial jobs and all that, uh, I was making a good salary. So I was well into the six figures. Uh, and so it was that I knew I wasn't going to be able to replace my entire salary right out of right out of the gate. Uh, and, and honestly, I was like, I don't think I'll be able to, but I'll be much happier. And so I wasn't trying right. to replace my salary because we were making like we were uh using that money to become debt free right and to invest in we had a strategic plan for our 401k and all these other this. things so there were things i was using the income to do to set us up to go full time right so we, we actually to, became debt free before we went full time that was a big one for we us we wanted to lower our monthly bills we wanted to lower our monthly spend as low as we could so that whatever so she he could go made back to work would cover cuz i'm a teacher by trade and my i did go back when Brad went full time I went back to teaching. I was I only did it for a year because then I went up. I wound up just joining him with the business. But uh, the plan was for me to just go back. Yeah. And, and so as a teacher my, in Tennessee, right. with eight years of teaching experience and a master's, and a master's degree, you make forty two thousand dollars a year. At least in our county. I think that, other counties might be a little bit better, but not that so much. So as a point of reference, my first in two the year two thousand. This is going to be depressing. My first job. I was making forty-seven thousand dollars a oh year gosh. as a mechanical engineer. Your first job. The first job. Yeah. So well, and if seventeen I had, years if we later, were still, if, what you were you were. And if we were still in Ohio, because I taught my first eight years before we had kids in Ohio, yeah. and if I had gone back when I when I took the job here in Tennessee, if I had gone back to my old district in Ohio at the same time. Um, it would I would have made twenty thousand dollars more because Ohio right. pay. They, they just pay stronger, really low they here. They have stronger unions. But there. the idea was yeah. that we knew all this, right? And so we wanted to reduce our 
we, so it wasn't as much about wanted, replacing yeah. income. So that that's a more of a question. Okay, here's the question I think you should ask yourself: Is not can I replace my income? Because maybe you're maybe you're a teacher and you're making forty two thousand. Right. Maybe you need to more than replace your income. Maybe you're like me and you're making, you know, a, a good salary after many years in corporate America. Right. And you don't want it. You don't need or want to replace your salary necessarily. The question is, what do you need to live on? Right. And that's where you can start getting really, really good at tightening down uh, the, the bootstraps and saying, all right, if we're okay, what if we don't have a mortgage? What if our cars are paid off? Right. Uh, what if we've never had credit card debt? We haven't we had, had student loans. Susan had either, credit card is, debt before we got married. That was how I went them over, folks. I had like a small, small amount of credit card debt. And before we got engaged, I, I knew it was probably coming. I was like, this is silly. Like, I, he didn't put any of his credit card debt on there. So I, I, I wasn't I'm making kidding. very much, but I saved really, really hard for like four months and I paid it off. And then I told him, and he was like, yes. <laughs> yes. So it was awesome. So we, anyway, we, we were just debt. like knocking yeah. out debt, knocking out debt, knocking out debt. And when you don't have those payments, uh, then things open up, right? Then it's mm -hmm. like, okay, what could we survive on? And that's the way we went. And so that's, that's the, um, that's the exercise I would encourage you to, to go through is right. what, not what do I need to replace, but what do I need? And what are my big expenses? Mm -hmm. uh, what's like the minimum amount we need? Uh, the whole Dave Ramsey thing. We're a big fan of Dave Ramsey. Right. We you did know, the debts. Beans and rice, yeah. Yeah. Uh, all that good stuff. So like if you are not going to eat out, if you are going to, you know, like mm -hmm. what's that minimum amount you could <clears throat> go for? And then, you know, then you can build on that. And I'm not saying to like live a Spartan life forever. Right. But, you know, until you get your, your debt taken care of and then you can start building up the savings account and all that good stuff. Because it frees you up to be able to take a risk right. and feel confident, at least somewhat. It was still nerve wracking, don't get me wrong. Like yeah. walking away from corporate, a corporate gig that was really pretty sweet was a big risk, but you were miserable. And and we knew- I was miserable. He, was, he hated his uh, job yeah. and I didn't want you to live your life like that, neither did you. And so it was, it was worth it, you know, for us it was totally worth it. And then like things worked out really well for us. So it's, um, it's been the best decision probably we ever made. Yeah. I mean, for sure. I mean, other than that pair of jeans I bought that one time. I know you were right. going to say something silly. But no, it was a really, you know, sometimes you got to, you're like a my... fork in the road and you got to make a decision. But I think the idea, like what we're saying is, but. <laughs> I don't know. I was, I was going to keep going with that, but I just. Oh, saying. well, okay. no. But yes. Yeah. Set yourself up for success. Yes, absolutely. Big John, thanks so much. Miter Bench is great. Jay Franks, awesome, awesome. Uh, to find expensive or rare lumber, do I have to buy it? Coy Robinson. Um, I don't. I have to buy most of my lumber these days, or I buy it off of um, Craigslist if I'm getting lucky and getting a good deal. Best furniture is made with plywood or hardwood. Andrew, um, hardwood, hardwood for sure. Chris, uh, business question. Any tips for pushing Etsy sales over Cyber Sunday? Buying ads on IG, is it worth it? Um, hmm. I don't know. I'm not good enough on Etsy to know, Chris. But I would say that that it I, I would venture to say no, unless I'm trying to figure out the right thing. Because we, like when you're running ads, you really want it to be leverageable. And what I mean by that is, um, if you're just trying to sell a dining table, I don't think that that's a great way. If you have, if you're trying to sell multiples, you want to be able to leverage. You want to be able to invest a dollar and make a dollar ten in ads, right? You, you, you don't want to have that as just a straight expense. And that takes time. So I think like saying, hey, should I run ads to take advantage of Cyber Monday? You're way too late in the game. Like, right, you, you want to have a strategy. And when and I don't run any ads at the moment, but I want to. And when I do, what I want it to be is like a whole process. So it's like you have to set up the funnel. You have to target and retarget and understand uh, what your CPM is, what your cost of acquisition for a customer is, all of that stuff with your average customer order, and all of that goes into a very much, you know, a, a very large planning process versus like a one day thing. So if you're just trying to sell one piece, I would just go, you know, ground and pound attack on like talking to all your friends and word of mouth and trying to get it sold. Uh, if you have a lot of pieces you're trying to sell and it's something that's ongoing, I would consider doing ads. 
but I would make it more of a, a, of a long-term ongoing strategy versus like a one and done. Because uh, frankly, not a lot of people are gonna buy off of just one ad, right? They need to see it multiple times unless it's really that good of an offer and then you're not gonna be making that much money. So it would need to be like a loss leader for something bigger that you'd be selling. So hopefully that answers your question. But yeah, I, I would be much more strategic about it personally. What we got over here? You're you're uh, you're crushing some typing. <laughs> Andrew, what's up, my man? Designable Co. in the house. Um, Katie was saying that uh, people were talking Andrew about Andrew pays so, off his car tomorrow. Yeah. Dude, fantastic! Congrats. So yes, we were talking about awesome. Andrew paying off his car. So awesome! Congrats to him on that. That's and, amazing. And uh, Kevin as well. Dude, and Kevin one car payment away. One car. I mean, that's it, it's it. such a big feeling feel, when you become so debt free. Good. Oh my gosh, it is so nice. It's like you're paying yourself, you know, because then all that money that you would be paying out, yep. you get to put like what is it? Dave, Dave Ramsey talks about have your money work for you instead of you work for your money. Yep. It is really true. Um, so that's awesome. And then Katie was saying that her husband, the day before Thanksgiving, they had their cars paid off, I think she said, and mm -hmm. he got hit head on. He's okay. Mm. Kind of reminded me of when you got, <laughs> you might tell the story where you got hit head on. And I mean, it's ridiculous. No. But it messed you up for a while. It did. It did. I got hit head on. Uh, I would. This Going was to work. 2000. <laughs> This was 2016, January yeah. 2016, I believe it was. Yeah. And I was literally sitting at the stoplight to turn into my work. And uh, it's, it's uh, you know, it was in the morning. It was like a little bit before eight o'clock in the morning. And it, it's up a hill around a curve. And then there's a and light. It's like a little turning left. lane. Right? And I'm in the turning lane and it's two lanes up and two lanes down. And uh, the sun rises. So I guess whatever, I guess I was facing west. Yeah because the sun rises over the back. So like the sun and so is coming down and these people are coming up and this kid, like I sat there and watched him, they're coming down the curve, the guy's reaching down to grab his sunglasses and just comes, just stops making the turn, straightens out and just, and I'm like, put my, horn, my hand on the horn and he just plowed me. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know how fast he's going, probably 35, 40. Uh, he just crushed me and I was in big blue. I thought we were on the phone when this happened maybe. Maybe no, not. Maybe we were not. I don't think so. But you were just sitting, you told was, me about it later. It was it was a glancing blow. Right. So he didn't completely like it wasn't like grill to grill, but it was like But it was enough. A heavy yeah. glancing blow. Uh, my airbag did not go off. Um I don't even know if Big Blue has airbags. <laughs> but Let's hope. But anyway, yeah, that was horrible. My, my back hurt well, for, and, and oh, and that... and then the kid, he was uh he was 17. No, I thought he, he didn't was, have a driver's he license. Was 15, honey. He may have been 15. He was under eight. Whatever he was. Even he didn't have a driver's license. He didn't have insurance. He had like he didn't taken have anything. his parents' car that morning without their permission. They took him away in a police car, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. Yeah. Like it was a whole it thing. Was, it was stupid. So anyway. It was stupid. Uh, and then my back hurt for a very long time. But yeah. now I'm okay. But it's okay. It's okay now. Uh, <laughs> you had to stretch for a long time. Yes. Uh, let's see here. Oh, what's up? Jesse. Jesse Salzburg. Salzburg, Sal Salisbury, oh, yeah. Salisbury, oh, Salisbury. Salisbury. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Jesse, I don't Jesse. like, you know, it's kind of, I always think Salisbury steak because, you know, what's the most efficient way to fry deli chicken, she oh, says. Oh, man. Uh, I would get a chicken deli cart, a deli, <laughs> You guys can figure out the, the most efficient cart. way to fry a deli turkey, yes. deli chicken, yes. whatever. Yes, uh, Jesse was a co-worker of mine back in the day when, when I did uh, productivity and efficiency for... Yeah for a Kroger and yeah. uh, one of our projects was how to most efficiently cook chicken. I didn't know that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Chicken breading cart. That was our, Dude. our design and the, uh, we did that bad boy and uh, a cart. whole, a whole so glamorous. chicken, a rotisserie chicken production schedule. So, you know, when we always go and you <laughs> well, like, yeah, that makes sense because you gotta make way, sure you have them. That's a really hard thing. To I'm going to say, I know this is a competitor <laughs> to Kroger. Publix chicken tenders. I don't know what they do. It is, they're fantastic. They're the best. That's who we stole the design ever. from. Really? That we stole. We went to those a Publix and we saw them. They had a breading <laughs> cart. And we're like, we we need to do that. Yeah. <laughs> and so what is it? We um, stole their design from them. What's the expression? Imitation is the highest form of form of flattery. Yeah, you know? that's right. Like it's or working for them. Or yeah. espionage, or whatever. Whatever. Jesse, I, I hope the uh, yeah. I hope the whole 
your whole was even I don't even know what the heck the it is. The playroom thing. Yeah, your console. Jesse's like building a thumbs up. Play? Go go give Jesse a follow she, over uh, on Instagram. Something. The Salt House. Yeah, she is just like jumping in. I mean, she's head got this first. beautiful house that they fixed up. And, in Cincinnati, it's beautiful. But she's building. It's really funny to watch her stories and see pretty. her like learn woodworking yeah. on the fly. <laughs> Jesse, yep. you're adorable, and it's it, it's painful and just wonderful to watch you all at the same and time. And Jet's so cute. They have a little. Uh, and she says, "When is a planner joiner worth it for new woodworkers?" And she oh. sees she's jumping straight in. Yeah, she's uh, getting and, it. Yeah, her little son is just adorable. Yep. Um, so anyway, planner joiner. So when is it worth it? I had I was answering this question the other day for a friend of mine. And I think it's worth it when, uh, when you want to start working with hardwood and you don't want to pay the prices of S4S, which is surface <laughs> four sides. So that's mm -hmm. like dimensional lumber. Uh, so all you have to do, like if you really want to just look at an ROI, like will it pay for itself? Uh, you can, all you have to do is literally look at what can I buy a uh, walnut, you know, one by six for or whatever, you know, they don't really sell them in one by sixes, but whatever that size is. Uh, so what can I buy three quarter inch walnut for? Cause that's, so just real quick on dimensioning, you're going to buy lumber at three quarters of an inch typically in the U S. Uh, so three quarter would be like the one by stock. When you buy rough lumber, you buy it what they call four quarter. It's not one, it's four quarter. Uh, and then you, you mill it down to three quarters or a strong, you know, like seven eighths. And so all you have to do is look at the price of the dimensional lumber versus the price of the rough lumber. And when you buy lumber like that, you buy it by the board feet, uh, board foot. And so you can, it's a pretty easy calculation. So you could say if rough, if rough walnut is uh, $7 a board foot and plain walnut is $10 a board foot, then that's $3 a board foot I'm gonna save, right? Uh, and so you can run that out. If I'm using 100 board feet, if I need to buy 100 board feet, I can save 300 bucks by milling it myself, give or take. Now, rough lumber, you're, you are gonna have some waste. So there is a little bit of, of uh, nuance in the math there, but that's, that's a, a great way to, to justify it from an actual cost perspective. Um, but yeah, that, but when you need it would just be like, if you wanna work with, if you have, if you wanna use different sizes of lumber that you don't have, say you need like three eighths of an inch lumber or whatever, uh, you want five eighths of an inch, you want some material that you can't get, then that's a great reason to have it. Uh, and also you can just work with a lot cooler lumber. Uh, my favorites are walnut and cherry, and you can see mm -hmm. some of those right up here, uh, uh, up above me. And uh, it's just a lot more expensive to buy that surfaced. And you can't typically find it as good either uh, because you can't, um, there's a lot of variation between woods like that. All right, I've got some questions over here. Let's hear them. Dennis Miko wants to know, he says he has a hope chest that has white mildew on it. White mildew. Um, I washed it with ble bleach. What do I seal it with before polyurethane? Hmm. I think if you, <clears throat> Dennis, um, I, I'm not an expert on this by any stretch. I would look at, and I don't even remember, like if bleach, I would, I would uh, just look to see, like if you need to neutralize that or if bleach is, is what do you call it? Neutral. <laughs> if, if bleach uh, like is neutral scale, or if it's whatever, acidic yeah. or basic, like maybe yeah. you might need to neutralize it. So it doesn't like kind of keep reacting with the wood. I'm not oh. sure uh, about that, but once you're there, mm -hmm. then as long as it's clean, you, you just go right into the ceiling. You don't have to, that would be the only thing is like, make sure you're on. Um, if you go to, even if you go just down to bare wood. So if you bleached mm -hmm. it and then get back to it's probably already bare wood, but if you just sand it, you should be good. Honestly, you, there's not much you probably need to do after that. And then you can go over straight away with the seal coat. All right. Yes. Um, and then Lipinski wants to know, what do you think is a good item to make and sell and make a good profit? Uh, Lipinski. That's the million dollar question. It is. So I'll give you kind of a stock answer and it's what a lot of people are doing, but is um, like small wares. Oh man, we've been going on Instagram for a long time. Small wares, oh, yeah, so yeah. small wares because they're, when I say small wares, I mean cutting boards, uh, little wall arts, uh, coasters, stuff like that, because there's a lot of buyers out there. Uh, but the flip side, so your your <laughs> question is kind of, um, what do you think well, let me. a good item to make and sell? Okay, what so I'm, I'm gonna, well, item? hold on, okay. yeah. So, and yeah. then what you, how you can make profit off that and, and, and really increase your margin is to customize it. Because the people problem with monogram. the problem with uh, cutting boards is it's 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 basically a commodity, right? Yeah. Because there's so many people making them. But if you can customize, then you can charge an extra ten to fifteen yeah. bucks 
to have it, uh, you know, to do juice grooves or to do, um, you know, whatever it handles, specific types of handles, inlays, epoxy inlays, CNC, uh, laser burning and etching, um, whatever it is. The more you can add customization, the better profit margin you're going to have, usually, um, as long as it's not yeah. like super time intensive. And then, but really where you want to start making the money is you need to start building bigger things. So like dining room tables, stuff like that. Right. Custom orders like that. Oh. Mike wants to know, Brad, what, si what size of roundover bit are you using during your mobile miter saw stand? Uh, like a 16th, 16th okay. inch roundover. Just, just enough to break the edge. Uh, Matt makes things. What's the biggest mistake in promoting my brand as I was growing? Anything I would have done differently? Oh, you? Uh, oh, me. We made no mistakes. There no were no mistakes. mistakes. Made. <laughs> um, but, uh, that's a good question. What would you say your biggest mistake was? Was that the question or did I just rephrase yes, no. it into something else? Uh, I think the, so we were just talking about this actually. It, mm -hmm. Honestly, it was on the front end. Uh, we did not spend probably enough time thinking about the brand and thinking about the brand name. We, we yeah. would not go with fix this, build that. If I was going to start the business today, I would not call it fix this, build that. And it's not because of the, um, I think it's very fitting. Mm -hmm. I think the name fits well. Right. But it is, it's, it's too generic. It's four generic words, very common words, right? And so people have a hard all the time, time right? we tell people, they're like, oh what's the gosh. channel? And they're like, fix yeah. this, build that. And they're like, what? what? It's like, they're so like confused. Like you always have to spell, like if I tell somebody about what we do and I'm like at the dentist's office or something, I almost have to write it down. For yeah, them they're, they're like, build this, stick. build this, build that. Like, right. I don't know what the deal is. Fix that, build this. Like, it's But they always mix it up. All, yes. And so I have bought almost all the domains. <laughs> There's one I haven't bought, but I've bought almost all the domains. All the and, versions. And I, oh, I did buy that one, didn't you I? You did recently. I had to pay like, I don't know. I bought it. Like, I think you bought build this, fix that or something. I bought, I've bought all the combinations that I'm interested in and I just redirect them to my site. Right. So that would probably be the biggest thing about marketing is I just, you know, we, we thought, thought it was we a clever name at the time. Job. Well, we did take a while. I mean, it wasn't like it was the first thing we thought of. And it I would have had a more really unique hard to logo. Pick a name. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't love the name or the logo quite honestly, I mean, but so, you know, they're, like, they've grown they, on us. They've they grown have. on us. I mean, it's, well, I don't want to change it now. Susan is encouraging me to change it. I'm telling her no. I mean, I'm sort of but, saying like, I think it would be fine. We could phase yeah, it in yeah, and he's, nope, nope, but nope, 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 Brad nope, nope, says no. Nope, 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 nope. So. Uh, <laughs> Van, uh, Van Wyako, uh, I'm sure I mispronounced that, bought the three-in-one stool plants. That's awesome, dude. Uh, any plans to expand the shop in 2021? Jazz, J.A. Snyder, <laughs> Jazz Snyder. We always have plans. Only if we can we find have daydreams. Place. Yeah, uh, we're looking for us. Jesse spot. says that we are sweet and painful is correct. <laughs> yes. Salisbury. That's what I said. Salisbury. I said it. I thought you said Salisbury or I something. I did, but I figured Salisbury. it out like oh, very okay. quickly. I missed that. Evan's yes. Workshop, what's up? Uh, any suggestions on leveling, leveling out snap and lock vinyl that has already been installed? Eric. No. I mean, you can't really do much once it's installed, honestly. Other than like, make sure it's not bound at the edges. What was this? I'm sorry, what? About flooring. Oh. Plywood or hardwood for most of my builds. Andrew, I like, uh, it depends upon what the type of build is. I like plywood for shop cabinets and I like, uh, I like walnut and things like that for furniture. Jessica says uh, her and her dad have been following the plans for the sideboard and uh, for the past week and she's building things with him and loves doing it and cool. she's had a lot of fun. Jessica, that is awesome. I love that so That's much. That's great. So hey, much. honey, Mike My says, dad is like super scared of woodworking, so. But he's into knife making, which is kind of odd. That is kind of funny. He also is deathly afraid he's going to shoot a knife through his carotid artery. Is he really? Oh, yeah, because like you have to buff it at some point. He's like, he's, he's like, he I'll, I'm, not, sharp, I'm not going to do it by though. Hand. I mean, I he's going to sharpen our kitchen knives, which really need it. And I keep saying, like, can he just only half sharpen them? Because <laughs> I'm going to slice myself. Like, he gets them like they're like cutting paper. Anyway, um, Evans workshop. Thank Mike you, says man. that if the Dixie chicks Keep can change their name, we can too. <laughs> what are they now? I don't know, but maybe they're just the chicks. Well, Lady, a Lady Annabelle oh, is yeah, now maybe just they Lady did. A. I knew that Lady A. No, they're a. just the chicks, right? Are they just the chicks? Are they the chicks? That's weird. Yeah, they're, they're just Dixie? the chicks. I guess you can't say well, Dixie. Yeah, I mean, that's like the same thing as Annabelle. I guess it is it's the got same negative thing negative as Annabelle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, well, I, we could just be fixed this. Fix this. <laughs> Build that. <laughs> well, that got a little too controversial. I know, yeah. No, I think we would be build that more than we'd be oh. fix this. Yeah, I don't know. We could just pick and Having choose. Having the words this and that in your brand name, don't do it. 
Don't do it. Stay just away from it. it. We could just be Brad yeah. Rodriguez. We could be. Well, that'd but be then you, we not don't want to. Yeah, we don't want to use the. Uh, yeah, the consulting down the road, you know, we're That's true. business consulting. So I, I do business yeah, consulting on the side, by the way, if you're ever interested, you can DM me. Yes, he does. Um, but we, uh, we have, we, we have plans. We got all kinds of We have of lots plans. of plans. We Call me Matt. Need to Matt figure them Bleach out. is acidic. See, you know. Oh, lots of conversation. Oh, and by the way, whoever was asked, no, 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 he is on here. I was just going to say, all these little conversation, the things that we talk about, on the live don't tell anybody no. <laughs> no. where are you going with this <laughs> no like when we were talking about oh what's the best type of um yeah, thing yeah. to build and sell on one more reason to be on the youtube chat oh, is that they're always like that. throwing out ideas or like all kinds of conversation here about oh bleach is acidic we didn't know that and so or, or now someone's saying it's alkaline i don't know but um it's a great place to go to get feedback and like little side conversations <laughs> and stuff so uh all right, cool. <laughs> Lucas, what's up, my man? Lucas always coming on at the end, baby. What's up? Cool. All right, well, we are going to sign off of All Instagram. Right. We went super long today on Instagram. So uh, we are just going to uh, grab that out of the holster there. Thank you so much, guys, for joining yes. on. Uh, we are going to be over there on, on YouTube for a little bit longer. So we didn't really pimp out the YouTube. YouTube, fix this, build that live. It's the second channel. We're there live right now and every Sunday. Go ahead and head over. If not, uh, we will see you guys. If you've not checked out the video, go check it out. <laughs> Small bathroom remodel. It's live on YouTube right now. See you guys next Sunday and have a great week. Build something awesome. Honey, Mike yep. says, Brad and Susan woodworking. In other words, BS woodworking. BS woodworking. <laughs> I What's like this? it. Woodworking with BS. And sunshine. <laughs> what? Uh, are you going to serenade the YouTube it's, folks? It's, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, uh, Is that a song? Hootie. Dar Darius Rucker. Darius Rucker. He's so got a like great voice. Beers and Sunshine. Oh, it's like that? the only BS he's, he wants is Beers and Sunshine. I don't sunshine. know that one. Yeah. I don't know that song. It's, it's a good one. Excuse me. <laughs> I know my mic picked that up. All right. Uh, build, yeah, build this, fix that. Exactly. Yeah, I know. So may, may, what what we should, we should just rebrand and just flip, like flip what it. What do you think we should name our channel? If we were going to rename just it, what would this, you suggest? That. Not BS Woodworking, although, Mike, it was very yep, funny. The chicks. See, that's not even rebranding. The chicks. That's, not, that's just shortening. Yeah, but you know they wouldn't have gone with the chicks. It doesn't matter. The beginning. It doesn't matter. So we can't just shorten it, though, to like fix build. <laughs> FTBT and then like some freaking rapper made a song. I don't even oh, go in there. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. I'm not even going there. Yeah. Don't Google it. You don't want to. No, you should. I don't know. It's funny. Um. <laughs> we need a Susan build on YouTube. Brian, that's what you think. Yeah. No, we don't. Uh, I, need, I need my wife with all of her faculties. No, no. Seriously. Here from Instagram, Ripcord. Thank you, my man. All right. Didn't know you had a second channel. That's well, right. We do. We do. We do. Oh, we, we do. We keep it. Uh, we keep it tight. Here every Tabo Sunday night. X from Phoenix. What's up? Coming on over. I know. I I don't think I've even talked about the second channel on the main channel, like in a video. No. I've done it like in posts and yeah, stuff on there, we but do we've that. not. We've not. Really well, then there done was it. the one week that we posted this on the main channel. We did. And it was crazy. Like it was like just full of people. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there the was... chat was like. <sighs> Yeah, that was that was my impression. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> I thought it was pretty good. What what's our what's our fun? Okay, what's our title? I have our, what's our title so far? Oh, oh well, we I thought a, you were talking about like fun conversation now, which mine was gonna be. Well, I was gonna say we have to pick pick a title favorite, first. I don't wanna, uh, let's maybe we'll get it from this. Pe favorite I think it's Christmas like candy. Pepe milk stout. Or beer. We have been. Um, I got the from Costco. I got the peppermint bark, peppermint Ghirardelli, bark. like. It's the milk you chocolate. You stop buying this stuff, man. I know. It's bad. I was, I was on we the scale all... the other day, and I was like, ooh. I know. We kind of ate like it was Thanksgiving this week, all week long, I would say. We were pretty healthy. But what we did to make it kind of Happy fun. Happy Thanksgiving this... week. I know. Well, so we didn't get together with family on Thanksgiving, and so it was kind of a bummer. But what I did, what, what I thought I would do to make it more fun is I let everybody pick their favorite meal, and we and I made those this week. And so they were not healthy. Um and it was really delightful, but yes, no, we we're going back to being healthy tomorrow. But the peppermint bark, the white chocolate with the peppermint bark, and then it's so good. It's not white chocolate. It's white chocolate on top. What do you think white is? That's why you like it. And, but I thought those other ones are just milk and dark. It's a mix though, right? The, okay, so there's like a layer of chocolate on the bottom, 
the pepperminty things and the white, which is the oh. white chocolate. What's in the middle? So, is it a sandwich? No, it's just the Open two fist. layers. Huh. Sandwich. There's I, nothing in the middle. I don't really look at them when I eat them. I just eat them. He just eats them. No, yeah. So like, I'm it's always either... looking at the back. It's like I peel it because it opens that way. And oh, I think I'm always looking. I look at the, at the top. So it's either you either get a milk chocolate one or yeah, yeah. you get a dark chocolate one. Yeah, yeah. Which works out perfectly because Brad is a milk chocolate guy. I am. The dark chocolate is where and it's I, at I like for me. white chocolate. That one is my jam. I like yes, white chocolate. Yes, those are but so only good. Like, only uh, so let's in... see. Trader Joe's mini peppermint. Warren meringues. Standard, Matt. What's up, my man? Yum. Good to see you. Andrew Blanks, when's it time to upgrade from a job site table saw to a saw stop? Uh, I've cut my hand. Wow. Handle or hand? Hand, oh, let's please say it's handle. I hope it's handle. Not hand, Andrew. Andrew Blanks, I would say that if was If you cut your hand twice in a year, time. that would be bad, yeah. <laughs> the question, the answer is ASAP. Um, right, Christmas present, right? Yeah, yeah. That's... Just have everybody chip in. Um, I'm sorry. Things. Katie says favorite Christmas candy is my fresh marshmallows. A uh, funny story about marshmallows. Yeah, I'm still waiting for those fresh marshmallows. Kid. I know. I, mean, I tried to we're, make. We're not still waiting. We're anxiously waiting. Anxiously, I tried to make marshmallows. For like, once. is it harvest? Like, do you harvest marshmallows? What? I don't know. She said she was like, it's not this. It's not the time yet. She makes them at a certain time. She just means that she makes them when she goes she out wants to the mar. We're talking about the trees. You she guys goes to the marsh. Do you know that the there's mellows? actually a mallow what? tree? What? There's a mallow tree. Okay, I think you're pulling my leg here. <laughs> I tried to make Listen, marshmallows once. If there's and a I if there's a rubber mixer. tree, how come there can't be a mallow tree? There's a rubber tree, but you don't go out to the rubber tree, get rubber, and suddenly you have gum. Yes, you do. It gets processed. Well. I mean, you exactly. Chew That's it, why she's got to have the mallow, then she oh marshes my. it later. Oh, this is a tangent. Marshed mallow. Marshed mallow. <laughs> marshed. That's like washed. Washed. We oh. washed her. Yeah. The the one I don't know what. Where is the accent? Where is the accent where they say water? What? Water. Water. What is that? Like water. Who water. says water? Who says theater? I think and cooler. I do. I think so water, <laughs> water. I, I think it's like a, I think it's like a northeast, somewhere in the northeast. Water? Now water. I will tell you. And I think I it's like a Delaware this. or like something weird like that. My mom says instead of saying sorry, she says sorry. sorry. She's from Wisconsin. Sorry. sorry, that's like that's like a, a Canadian thing. Well, she's just south of Canada, as she was back in the day. And then, and when she was a kid, instead of it being a water fountain, they called it a bubbler. The bubbler it bubbles up. Good. Go, uh, so yeah, fetch me some good water times. From the Oh, hang right, on. Marshmallow at? comes from the mallow plant? No. Uh, are you guys all trying to trick me? Am I getting punked here? <laughs> yes. Oh. No. Beth, Beth said, Beth, I was like, I just read, quickly read, we had turkey with the leftovers and I made turkey soup. Turkey Somehow soup. I just saw that and I thought she said she had leftover wild turkey and I was like, hey, Whoa. You know, live it up. <laughs> like, we got some leftover wild turkey. We said some soup. Wild turkey. Now that would be a festive Thanksgiving. Call your YouTube channel Mistakes and Outtakes. Oh, we should. There you go. Yeah, that could uh, be another channel. Hope chests were design milled and fitted 20 years ago. That's oh. the mold there. Oh. Yeah, you're, you're ready to go awesome. then, man. Um, <laughs> Katie says, stop it. <laughs> I love it. Um, Let's see here. White chocolate is no chocolate at all. Call me Matt. Come on, man. Come on. Uh, it's from Brad, Arkansas. Build, renovate, and design. Look at Rory. Brad. Brad. Just the just Brad. Brad. Yeah. Build, renovate, and design. It'd be like B R A D spelled out like that. We've watched so many of these movies with our kids. I feel like that would be like a spy organization <laughs> somehow. Fast action racing team <laughs> yeah, or something. <laughs> yes. yes. Oh gosh. Wada. Katie I, says I Wada. That, that's but she's I think, from New England. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, water. I'm sorry, Jill. Are you being serious? The mallow is a plant, and it's a real thing. It grows wild yeah, in the she's... south. No. It's from Arkansas. I tried water. to make marshmallows one time, and I did not go get a mallow plant. I. You I should. don't know. I'll have to Google this later. The mallow is a plant. It's a real thing. She says I mean, it I'm, grows in the wild in the southwest. I'm reading it. She's I'm not believing it. Wooder, Chris, Fi exactly, Andrew. That is exactly Chris Fix. He's got the Wooder, the, the Chris Fix, Chris Fix at Water. I get told all the time that I sound like Chris Fix. I get not all the time, but frequently enough that I remember it. Who's Chris Fix? He's this. Uh, he's got a uh, automotive channel. Oh. 
And like you never see his face. Surprisingly, no. I have not seen. He's like Stig. He wears you don't you have no idea who Stig is, but no. he wears like a helmet when he's doing stuff. But he like fixes okay. up cars and just like anything about. He's basically like a, a car DIYer. He's like how to fix this, how to build that. Mm-hmm. Da, da, da. Yeah. <laughs> he should have been. That's what he. He's Chris Fix It. So Keith says that Wooder is Fix-It. Philadelphia. Ooh, I could sort of see that. A Philly? Hang on. I could see that. Isn't Wooder. Philadelphia like? Aren't there? Okay. Are there Mennonite or Amish people in the Philadelphia? Pennsylvania. Because Wooder sounds like, you know, there's a lot of like a German dialect kind of going on with that. I've talked to an Amish person before. They have a lot of an accent. It just seems like that could fit. Making I like connection. it. I mean, hey, listen. I don't know if it's true. You're going out on a limb. I, I like am. Where, I like where you're going. But you're, that makes logical sense you're to You're making me. connections. I could be completely wrong on that. Oh, by the way. It's also I was, known uh, as the marshmallow plant. I have learned something hey, tonight, Jill. If you guys are not, if you want to see some, it's mostly tips right now. I've, I've got a thing going on with them, and I'm, I have to be pretty serious for the moment. But oh. um, I, we are on TikTok. When I say we, I mean me. Susan has no idea no, about I'm any not of this. No, on TikTok. But I'm not even you. To. I'm talking about the business. Uh, no, oh, yeah. don't I'm ever go on TikTok. On there. TikTok is like the ultimate time waster. It's just like so bite-sized, chunkable. Like just yeah. they just get you, and it's. It's horrible. That's why I haven't but done it. But I was, um, I was doing, I just did a, a thing with, uh, I have this little digital decibel meter, digital sound level meter. <laughs> it's like some Chinese brand name, digital sound level meter. And uh, I'm going to be doing some tests on different things to see like how loud different machines are. And I just thought that was kind of fun. So that was sitting over there. Because people don't really understand decibels either. And like it's a logarithmic, logarith, logarithmic. Why does it sound so weird? Logarithmic. Logarithmic. Log, a lot. Logomorphic. Log- Logomorphic? <laughs> I'm thinking of like... <laughs> what? I don't know what I'm thinking about, but it's funny. Uh, <laughs> anyway, because so I was like, hey, this one's like 83 decibels. I had two compressors, and I was like, this one's 83 decibels, and this one's 90. And I was like, it's so much quieter. And he's like, it's only like seven decibels. And I was like, yeah, but that's like two times as loud. Or like, right. I don't know what the number is, but because it's logomorphic. Oh. Logoma. I listened to a podcast that you should listen to. It was... Freakonomics. Yeah. About the sound? Did you... No, I just... No, I think it was Freakonomics. I know, because you always love talking about Freakonomics. I I listen to Freakonomics. I love the Freakonomics podcast. No, but they had a whole thing about study of silence. And it's the sound. But you know how you're like... But also... So militant about... Did you finish your thing about that? uh, Well, it's... It's... Because it's weird. And it's not... You can't just say like... Because it's there's two things about sound there's what is it there's the noise there's the pressure amplitude and then like the noise amplitude so it's really weird it's like not even it's got two components oh like noise in general has two components like high frequency and low frequency Mm, more like frequency and then like something else <laughs> okay. but yes i mean because well, thing... it has all the band it does have like all the bands and all that good stuff i have no idea what i'm talking about well, but i just about... i was i was on wikipedia and it was like here's the so yes. one of the it's like the the scalar part of it is like you know this is like the the amplitude part and this is the i don't know i, have, I literally have no idea what i'm saying well so here's what i was going to tell you was that on um go right ahead on, i think we need, a, we need a um i know I know. We need a like a um, oh, a laugh a, like, track. <laughs> we can put that one in there. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen. I was gonna tell you. I was gonna say like when we're with the random conversation, uh, like oh, like a warning, a, random conversation in the head. The like, tangent. Yeah. Tangent yeah. Oh, alert. Tan- yeah. Tangent we have alert. a we have a tangent. I'd be like, <laughs> tangent alert. Yes. 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 No. Go ahead. Listen. Sorry. On the frequency, uh, the the sound, of, the sound of study of silence or something, they were talking about how I think they said that at 80 decibels, that was considered like after they did all these studies to show that that is a disruptive amount of noise for concentration. And there was yeah. a whole study that went into this. Like this one school was right by railroad tracks way back in the day. Um, and then like if you were, if your classroom happened to be on the side by the tracks, Ooh. every four and a half minutes a train came by during the day. And those kids were a full reading level behind the kids on the quiet side of the school. Now, this was like back in, I don't know, it was a while ago. But so then they wound up, this lady did a study. It was in the 80s or 70s. I thought it was before that, but it was whatever. Like, we're like, like 2010. No, I mean, it was a while ago. There's this thing on TikTok. 
It's another thing. And it's this thing going around. It's like, hey, to all the older people out there on TikTok, like if you were born in the late 90s. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> get out of here. And then, the, but then the funniest part is like. This is people, why I'm not on TikTok. Then, then the funny part is like people reposting it. Like, oh, my God. And they're like, I was born in 85. And I was like. 85. <laughs> And those are the, I, I, it's more like, I was born in 91. I was uh, like. I was in middle school. Yeah. yeah, at that time. Anyway, no. I, I had a mullet by 91. <laughs> anyway, my whole awesome. point was, so like 80 decibels is enough to like totally throw off someone's um, concentration and not be able. Oh, I just threw off concentration. Ooh. You were at 82. Yeah. So our shop. That's crazy. Hey, stop talking. About 38 decibels. But yeah, they were talking about that, about noise pollution, about like the low-lying level, Which like is... the hum that we're so used to. But I don't crazy. know. What it was, was that, really interesting. Was that one that dude killed all those people? I know. I thought about that too. <laughs> was that Blacklist? Yes. That was, was Blacklist. blacklist. Okay. It was it wasn't whatever. Sorry. Anyway, nobody actually killed anybody. No. At least to our knowledge. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah. I know. We just so went Jill, off for I like believe you now. Minutes. I know you're not punking me. It just seems crazy to me, the whole marshmallow thing, but okay. Logarithmic. Yeah, I kept saying logarithmic. Logarithmic. Thank you. It's easier to say when you can read it. <laughs> Katie said the tangent alert sign would be on the entire life. Ooh. This could be true. Burn. <laughs> Solid burn <laughs> true. branch. Yes. I tuned out <laughs> Nailbender. Is he referring to the Doppler effect? I about sound. <laughs> what is it? What did you read? It said, is he referring to the Doppler effect? I tuned out for a minute. Yes. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> These are the conversations we normally have. We're like talking about random podcasts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Conversation is 60 dB uh, is about 30. He's the right. Room has, Kevin, you were right. Ours yeah. is about 30 decibels. Yeah, I like that. Can this quiet room has negative. Oh, the, there's a quiet room. Yeah. There's oh. Like, oh, the, like there's there's a whole thing huh. that goes on. There's been a few YouTubers that have made videos about it but that's like, crazy you can go insane in like a quiet room like it will wow. it starts messing with you like if you're in a room what? where like a quiet room like it's that like torture is just silence. yeah like where you can't hear anything and then i think some of them they turn the I lights out that. as well oh and it's just like, be like sensory deprivation then yeah basically yeah. Of, yeah and you're there and then like after just like five minutes like you start and then you like you can hear because sometimes i can hear it I'll hear the the heartbeat. Yeah, like yeah. I'll hear That's the blood flow in my here, ear. Yeah. Well, certain times I can hear that, I but can I can imagine too. like if you've never, if if there's like no other sound going on, and you just like, and you just start like freaking out and like you don't know what's reality wow. anymore. <laughs> so like there was a so challenge. Like a happy medium. There was like a challenge to stay an hour in the room. Uh, yeah. No, thank you. I mean, so yeah. there's a there's a I'd happy medium I'd be, between actually, like not do it. too I'd be loud the worst person. and too quiet. I'd be the worst person to be in that room. I have very acute senses. Yes, he does. It's very frustrating. I've got very good hearing, this, very good smelling. You have not the best senses. My sight, my is, senses my sight is going away. To yours. You're, but, so, you're not wearing glasses, sir. I know, but I can, I, um, I can feel it You're going. not going to be a sharpshooter anytime soon? No. That's yeah. my past life. <laughs> I don't like to talk about that. No, but know. yeah, like Brad has a really good sense of smell. And, like you're one of those. Well, that was another podcast Look I listened nose. to. I know it's pretty impressive, but no, like that was another thing. Like there's people that have. Um, I know I could be. I could do that. There's some chef that like uh, she was interviewed on another podcast, and they're she has. Smellers. Well, yeah, but she's like hers is. But you have like all of them though. But she's like part of the reason why she went into cooking. She's famous. She's Indian. I can't think of her name though, because like she talked about how when she was a little kid, she'd crawl up in the pantry to like with the spite, the hot spices were, and she would just eat them and her parents would freak out. Cause that was like not what you would give the kids and didn't bother her, which just seems really strange. It seems like, flip. but she can, ta she can, she can like taste minute flavors and things. Um, yeah, that seems weird. That doesn't seem like that would match up. I know, but she can, and she's famous. And I don't and know there her you name. Go. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you what? have really good sense oh, of hearing. Oh, no, no, there we go. We're going about. Um, no, the worst destruction is oh. Graduated in high school in 90, 92. Oh. Wow, this, these are people. Twenty twenty four from Andrew Strong's like yeah, oh. I graduated twenty twenty four. Katie, uh, yeah, I've seen the. She's talking about the sensory deprivation baths. Is that a float spa kind of thing? Oh yeah, those are cool. Mm -hmm. Well, have you done one? No, they look cool though. I know. I was thinking we would do one and then. But like, that fl float happened. room, that's what John's buddy, John uh, just did a, a video for a guy who owns like a float lounge. Oh. You go in there and float. 
explode. <laughs> yep. Uh, all right. Awesome. Well, we are past 10 o'clock. So yep. I think that's time for us to yep. vamoose. Um, the cook's name, is it Padma? Padma, yes. It is yes. Padma. There you go. Yeah, I don't remember her last name. I don't either. Yep. Didn't know about it. Well, her. and Jill, like, she's talking, real quick. She was talking about if there's a TV or radio on in the next room, she struggles. I'm the same way, but oh, I need to concentrate. Huh? I thought you said a two beer radio, and I was like, Ooh, a what's TV that? or a radio. <laughs> what I've started I doing a, is putting in my radio. earbuds, and then I like listen to really, really classical. quiet classical music, and I really dig it. I always, I, love, were, yeah. I really like classical music though, but it's like it's not distracting, and I have it at a very low level, and then it kind of blocks everything else out, which is helpful because our kids are home a lot. I was say, with AKA. COVID kids yeah. <laughs> Every, everything else <laughs> like do not come all, in the room all three of the else's i tried to train them like if mom has her earbuds in don't come in the don't room but that room. doesn't that doesn't really work yeah we try padma lakshmi yes that's yes. that's who it is anyway awesome thank you all right guys thank you so much for joining and oh dadgum i forgot to mention dadgum 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 <laughs> what is that from that's from uh mater don't don't go away oh yeah, yeah, yeah. i forgot to mention yes i was gonna mention and i completely blanked i, I did it right before we came out here is that um oh, yeah so we've got the plan sale going on so we have 25 percent right. off all plans for uh the rest of today and into tomorrow. tomorrow. So mm -hmm. through Cyber Monday, it started Black Friday. You can use code BF25, Black Friday 25, BF25 at checkout at my plan store, which is, uh, it's on Gumroad. So gumroad.com forward slash fix this bill that. That's right. Or plans.fix this bill that. You can also get to it from the website, uh, my fix this bill that.com. And uh, the other thing though, is that I just put on, I'm trying to clear out all the old shirts we have um, and I have smalls and mediums. So if you're a small or a medium, you're in luck. Uh, so they're on sale right now for, I don't know, they're 14 bucks. I was going to give you the percentage, but I can't even think about it right now. Okay. Uh, yeah, 30% 30, 30 off, I think. So 14 bucks down from 20. We're trying to get rid of them. So if you're a small or a medium, or if you have a friend that, you know, wants to have a name you can't pronounce, you know, fix this, build that. Actually, it's, it looks great when you read it. Then, uh, yeah, go check it out. It's on the website in the shop there. So it's under, uh, it's actually under plans, which makes no sense. We're still redoing the site. But uh, if you are interested in that, if you have any trouble finding it, send me a DM. If not, don't worry about it. I know a lot of you have shirts already. <laughs> so you're probably not the people that I need to be talking about. But if you're thinking about buying one or for your kid or for your wife or husband or dog. Dog. If you, if you get with your dog and by. send us a picture Please of your dog. Biddy would be super small. Yeah, we've we've kidnapped a cat. We've adopted a neighborhood cat. When we say adopted, we just mean we put treats out, and now it like shows up at our doorstep like all the time. All the time, she's so and, cute, and we love it. It's fantastic. Yes, but we're anyway. thinking about making her a little kitty house. <laughs> yeah, I might make her a kitty house. <laughs> <laughs> she's so cute. So anyway, there it was. All right, so we will uh, we will talk to you guys <laughs> next all right. next yeah. Sunday, and have a great week. Get out there, build something awesome. That's right. And uh, yeah, nothing, nothing big until next Sunday. Right. <laughs> we'll let you know what we didn't get done next yeah. Sunday. All right. Yeah. All, All right. right, guys. Good night, everybody. See ya. Bye. Bye.